Now let's have a conversation about what happened, uh, what we saw coming out of the courts yesterday. The Environment and Land Court yesterday dismissed a petition challenging the government's move to lift a ban on the cultivation of biotechnology foods, paving way for the growing and importation of GM crops. In a dispatch in October last year, the cabinet had lifted a 10-year ban imposed on biotechnology foods, sparking a number of court cases due to fears that the importation of GMOs might be harmful to human health animals, the environment, and the biodiversity of Kenya. GMOs and the application of technology is largely contested. However, Justice Oscar Angote dismissed that case, saying Kenya has put in place robust biosafety regulatory framework with inbuilt structures that must be, uh, be met before the importation or cultivation of GMOs. So, that particular case dismissed let's have that conversation we are joined by dr joel ocheng who is an agricultural biotech uh, he's from agricultural biotechnology and secretary general of the kenya university biotechnology consortium he's here with us in the studio dr good morning 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 welcome to kenya's biggest conversation thank you thank that's you. the hot seat of the situation room mm -hmm. it is not genetically modified this <laughs> is organic like that <laughs> okay <laughs> to welcome you to the conversation city has the day's proverb this week's proverbs have been from the united republic of tanzania yes Jamhuri ya Mungano. yes and this, tanzania. Is, this is our final proverb for the week mm -hmm. a long road cannot lack corners if you want to talk to me talk, talk to, to me, me direct <laughs> Don't go it's around the, the corners. corners. Yes, and don't go around looking for for corners. Mm -hmm. Doctor Cheng, mm -hmm. how what how do you interpret this problem? This problem. Well, uh, I think the first thing that I, I may want to clarify is that uh, there is quite a lot of uh, misunderstanding about what happened mm -hmm. and what is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the first issue, and no, before we go into that one, mm -hmm. let's do the program the proverb first. Mm -hmm. This proverb says yes. There's no long road without corners mm -hmm. from Tanzania. Mm -hmm. What do you think the proverb is telling us? <laughs> well, it just means that uh, you should not tire uh, uh, striving. Mm. Uh, regardless of uh, the length of the road or those corners, you can still surmount. Mm. That's the way I would personally look at it in, the, in light of my situation today. <laughs> Very good. So your long road has corners. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into clarifications. What's been happening since that time when the cabinet issued a dispatch and said, All right, so let's lift this, this ban. Uh -huh. And there was a lot of public outcry. Uh -huh. And there were several people who moved to court. Take us now from that point. Yes, uh, uh, as I said earlier, there's uh, one aspect that uh, needs seriously to be clarified to Kenyans. Okay. Even <laughs> ahead of that, mm. that uh, the lifting of ban on GMO was not the lifting of all regulatory systems. It was not opening any floodgates. Mm. It was just that there was uh, a law and regulations that uh, govern uh, the use of uh, GMO in Kenya. But then a ban was put in place that regardless of these laws, regardless of the permission that you can seek, now you can't do it. That was a ban. Now, now you can lifting, do it. Now you cannot do it. Okay. Then now lifting of the ban meant mm. that now we are going back to square one, where now you can do it according to existing standards, laws, and regulations. Okay. Where now if you want to cultivate or if you want to import, then you have to apply, you have to show uh, your case, it has to be uh, determined that mm. it is safe and all that kind of thing. Mm. That's where we are. But then, of course, uh, people misunderstood to mean that lifting ban means opening floodgates. You can now bring it, come and mitumba, akunas, sharia, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's the misunderstanding that has been uh, there. But so <laughs> even with the importation, mm -hmm. there was going to be regulation. There has always been regulations. Okay. When the cabinet was saying now we lift mm -hmm. this ban, mm -hmm. they were saying mm -hmm. that you can apply to yes. import gmo foods you can now apply and once you apply to import gmo foods mm -hmm. what other laws are there to yes. regulate the consumption all the way to the plate now what happened that we have uh, by safety act mm -hmm. 209 mm -hmm. with uh, implementing regulations mm -hmm. the first regulation and most important is the labeling regulation that uh, all gm products have to be labeled prominently Mm. So that Kenyans can make informed choices mm -hmm. whether take GMO or not. That's one, mm. and that is an observance of consumer rights as mm. uh, prescribed in our constitution. And the second one is traceability. Mm -hmm. With that labeling, there is also an index number on it that I can pick it and say this one came from Malawi. 
Mm. This one was grown by Chiang uh, in Kindube or somewhere near there. Mm. Or oh, this one came from uh, that's laboring relation. Then we also have uh, import regulations mm -hmm. that define what you must do and defines how the national biosafety regulator goes ahead to determine the safety of that before it comes into the country. The other one is handling regulation that is uh, in the making. Then there is transit regulation that if you want to move GMO through Kenya, mm. Even if it is not meant for local market, mm. there are regulations about how that is done. So the cabinet lifting of the ban meant that now we are going back to the regulations. Okay. Now you can import, but with the cabinet ban, it meant that you, regardless of those regulations, you can do it. Before that ten-year ban was mm -hmm. nothing moves. Okay. Yes. yes. Then people went to court. This mm -hmm. particular one that was before Justice Angote yesterday. Yes. yes. What was the a particular application here? Now that application was filed by the Law Society of Kenya, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was base, basing itself on environmental issues, mm. and that concerned mostly local cultivation. Uh, they made claims, first, that GM, uh, GMO products were dangerous and can kill people. The second, that was it was not safe for the environment. And the third was that uh, it interfered with the local agricultural systems, mm. uh, seeds of seeds of rent and all those kind of things. Mm. Now, all these uh, petitions are related. There are other two in Nairobi. Uh, this one was filed in Nanyuki, but mm -hmm. of course moved to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the item of the petitions, they appear to be concerted. And they appear to be using similar uh, witnesses, similar, uh, I would call it uh, kitchen room or mm. kitchen uh, cabinet mm. or kitchen, you know what I mean. <laughs> there are sources you you seem same. to have similar sources of yeah. information. Mm. You seem to have similar people uh, filing themselves as experts. Mm. You know the word experts used in Kenya to mean anything. So these people are many. Uh, they have multiple petitions. Mm. So that in the hope that if one fails, that will succeed. So there's still other pending petitions. Oh, of course, there are two more, in court. two more pending. But two of more. course, the two have been uh, consolidated into one. Yeah. Okay. So now there is one more petition pending in court. Yeah. Okay. Uh, filed by the Peasants League, mm. uh, and of course we can't go into that because it's a matter in court. Mm -hmm. But the issue here is this: that first of all. We have consumed GMO in Kenya um, way before this. And it was officially opened by the late President uh, Mwaki Baki uh, when we faced uh, famine in Kenya. The, I think it should be remembered that the purpose for GMO is not just fun. We have a serious food security situation in Kenya and many parts of the world. And our situation is even more unique than Europe, for example. Uh, you have heard people quoting that there is no GMO in Europe, they don't want GMO. The issue of Europe is a glut. They have more food than they need. And you should be asking why. And you should be asking whether truly they don't want GMO. Mm. You know, international trade was is something you understand better. So, our purpose here is to solve serious food security problems. Mm. The first one is on production level. Our farmers are very hardworking people. But the problem is that they are facing serious problems with uh, crop pests, for example. And that's why we developed uh, BT maize that is insect protected so that the 60% or more losses that we experience in the farm can be surmounted. Mm. That loss is the reason why we even import. Mm. So the second one is about food safety. With BT maize, for example, uh, you are shielding the maize from infection mm. by the crop pest, the stem borer and the corn borer. Mm -hmm. Now, the corn borer will come and uh, open the seed coat, uh, which we call canal in science. Mm. If it opens the seed coat, it makes it now vulnerable to fungal infection. And when the fungus comes in, especially some species like the spagellus mm. the fungus, um, it now, you know, there's a secondary metabolite produced by fungus, a certain species. That is what we call aflatoxin, mm -hmm. which causes cancer mm -hmm. and poses serious food security um, and food safety problems in Kenya. And in fact, uh, to be honest with you, that loss, the 60% or more, is why we import. And if we can block it, then we will not even need to import. We don't need to import. Mm -hmm. And uh, cancer is caused by aflatoxin, and people know that, even yourself, you know that. And that is even the reason why uh, millers import their maize. Why would they import maize when there's one next door? You think they're businessmen who don't think? <laughs> There's a reason for that. There's quality of the seed. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't want to mill down uh, 
into Unga, something that's going to harm people. So they import cleaner uh, maize. And of course, this is why the government, as you've seen, they're uh, putting in systems of drying. Because when you harvest, uh, for example, maize with high moisture content, then you're breeding aflatoxin. Mm -hmm. uh, you're breeding the fungus that causes aflatoxin. So our intention should be well understood. And this is why there's a uh, regulation, there are safety measures, there are tests that are conducted. And for your information, if you are developing any GM product, it is tested from the laboratory all the way to the market. Mm. Laboratory level, cellular level tests, confined field trial tests, national performance trial tests. First, you're testing whether it is safe. Mm. Second, you're testing whether the gene you are putting in truly protects the maize from the insect. Mm -hmm. Because you can make claims that are not just meaningless. Mm -hmm. So if it is found to be truly protecting the maize from uh, the borer, then now we go to safety tests. By the time you see any product approved for market, you should be sure that this thing has been proven to be safe. Okay. And, and all this process is done alongside regulators in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, there's NEMA, there's NBA, there's all these things, including the civil society. Uh, because we are looking at uh, consumer rights, we're looking at uh, public participation and all this kind of thing. Mm. Yes. Dr. Chang, I mean, when, you, when the uproar that you hear mm -hmm. from a society, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, a lot of times it's due to misunderstanding, mm -hmm. you know, um, yes. misinformation, whatever the case may be. And uh, so here we are, and every time we heard about, uh, we hear about GMO, the first thing is that food is being manufactured mm -hmm. to Essentially, it's the the very makeup of a plant or grain mm -hmm. or f other kinds of food is being tinkered with mm -hmm. so that it either grows faster um, or uh, rather that develops faster and that you can have more of it in a shorter period of time. That's the thought in people's mind. And that then because of that, you cannot control what is in it later because you're introducing something that could pause pose some kind of danger mm -hmm. so let's maybe give us an an insight into what really happens here we've heard it many times before but it's very necessary for us to hear it every time yeah. because then it fuels yeah. our conversations thank you thank you very much now I, I will talk about a specific case so that it's easier to understand okay. than, than general GMO okay now I want to talk about BT maze and what do we do to develop what we call BT maze in very brief sense mm. now we have um, a bacterium uh, in the soil that we take in our salads uh, inadvertently, that we take in our food systems every day. It's called Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a harmless soil bacterium, mm. harmless to humans and harmless to the environment. That bacterium has been used for the more than 38 years as a formulation for making pesticide because it has uh, several proteins would I would call insecticidal proteins mm. that can kill specific insects types. I thought it was, you said it's almost harmless to everyone. Mm. No, no, harmless to humans, harmless, and the to environment. humans, harmless to the environment, harmless. the bacterium itself. Okay, now what happens is that this bacterium has insecticidal proteins mm. that are only harmless when in singular, mm. but it, when it's in the organism, there's no problem. Okay, now this is the protein that we isolate for a specific target organism. Mm. and we take a gene, just a single gene from that protein, mm -hmm. I mean, a single gene from that organism, the one I'm calling the protein, and incorporate it into the genome of maize. Now, the reason why it doesn't affect us first, because before you even go further, <laughs> the first issue, will it affect us? Mm. We have a drug called malaraquine, malaraquine mm -hmm. that we take. We take it, and it targets plasmodium falciparum, the organism that causes malaria in humans, mm -hmm. which is in your blood system. Mm. But in your body, there are many other microorganisms and yourself. But fortunately, malaria queen cannot kill you or these other organisms because it is target specific. Okay. okay. That same technology that is target specific, that doesn't kill you, that doesn't kill uh, Isoracia coli in your tummy, mm. that doesn't kill any other microorganism in your, in your system, is the same one we use so that this protein will target the stem borer only. Mm. Not even the bee mm -hmm. will be affected. Mm. So it will produce a protein that is specific to kill the stem borer only. Bees will not die, no other organism will die. 
not even the maize, mm. not even you feed the maize or your livestock. Mm. Okay. That's what we do. And when we incorporate it in the maize, we test for safety. Once that's proven, mm. we test the agronomic properties of that maize. Mm. Does it reduce the nutrients? Does it introduce new nutrients? Does it introduce new proteins that are not there? Does it? We test all these things. When you talk about biosafety regulations, it's about uh, testing, including uh, toxicology tests. Mm. It is something that is foolproof. Okay, but that's yes. right. Yes. You, we target, so this protein then is introduced into the stem borer. No, into, into the, the maize. Into, into the maize. maize. Genome. Okay. Into the seed. The DNA into of the maize. seed of the yes. And Not seed, no, no, no. Mm. Into, into the genome of maize. Okay, okay, so that's the makeup of the maize itself. Yes, yes. Okay. The foundation. And now the question is, mm. why? If you had alluded yeah. to that before, because yeah. essentially what you're saying is that you're trying to protect this maize from from yes. pests from pests from stem borer the stem specific borer. pest yeah specific that specific pest yes. which does what what does that, that pest do? that pest mm. invades the maize mm -hmm. and eats it up okay and the maize dries and falls okay and is that what is happening with maize around the country yes. if not for this um modified intervention mm -hmm. so what we are saying then with mm -hmm. gen genetically modified maize for example if we stick on maize yes, yes. is that you're not changing mm -hmm. the makeup of the maize what no. you're doing is introducing something into it mm -hmm. so that it then does not spoil and dry off but that is changing no no no. so that you're doing, actually changing it the history is this mm. the in the ancestor of modern day maize mm. is called teosinti okay um in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Now, Teosinte had that protection earlier. Okay. But due to long term domestication and selection for other traits, mm -hmm. the maize lost this natural ability. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That natural ability to protect itself. Okay. So we are actually reintroducing. Okay. What it was, was there before? It was there mm -hmm. before. Okay. But it got lost during, you know, when you do long term selection for other specific traits, yes. mm -hmm. sometimes you lose what other things are. Yeah. So it lost that, and we are introducing it. Okay. Now, yes. The fear then mm -hmm. for a lot of people. For mm -hmm. ev well, look, everybody who speaks out against this, the fear here is that you reintroduce something unnaturally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then what would be the repercussions later? Could it then mm -hmm. mutate into something else? No. Okay. Actually, what we are doing, we are introducing something that cannot mutate. It has no ability. Okay. It is a gene promoter. Okay. So the, it has no ability to mutate into okay. anything. Okay. What In fact, mutations are natural, uh -huh. yes. and they occur randomly at any DNA, even without us. Yeah. Even without introducing anything, normal mutations occur. You have planted white maize before. Yeah. And when you go to the farm to harvest, you see indigo, or yellow, and other things. Yeah. Yes. That's natural. Okay. And it doesn't occur because of GMO. Mm. Now the other thing is that uh, when you introduce this thing. You select out. There's something we call selective markers. Whatever you use introducing it is removed, mm -hmm. so that you remain with only a protein that will only act for that specific purpose on the borer alone. On the borer alone. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like malaria queen. Right. People who have been taking malaria queen. Do they die later? No, the, the malaria goes away. They wouldn't die later well, because what happens is the mosquito gets used to malaria queen, yeah, okay. and, and after a while you need. Another, Another kind drug. of medication. Yes. The, the plasmodium, not a mosquito. Yeah, yes. <laughs> mosquito is a carrier. <laughs> but so now, what happens is this? And the plasmodium lives where? The plasmodium is in your system. Yes. It comes into your blood system. Yes. It's carried by the mosquito into uh, your body uh, through a life cycle. Uh, so the mosquito is involved, isn't it? As a carrier only. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. The, the, this one no, no, no. It's a plasmodium that lands no, the, the this no, killer. No, I, no let I, him I understand. Want, yeah. I want to connect this. You yeah. see, when you say they are natural occurrences, mm. and he has stated very clearly mm. that whatever the GMO does does not interfere with these processes. Yeah. What they are doing is targeting something very, very specific. Yes. For example, introducing a protective mechanism that naturally existed in that particular grain but which has been lost over time yes. mm. okay mm -hmm. now why mutation is important to me mm -hmm. is because it says it's a natural occurrence sure. all right mm -hmm. now when he gives the example of plasmodium mm -hmm. and mosquito mm -hmm. what comes to mind is we start with malaria queen mm -hmm. then we move into 
many other drugs that have different bases. Yes. Mm. So the question is, why, if that was working all along, is it us who have adapted to that particular, or is it the disease the carrying plasmodium, plasmodium has that has? That is really what I, now. Mm. If I connect that yeah. with what they are doing with the maze, then I'm saying with time the borer. Thank you. Oh, yeah. you, you, we'll you, 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 you you've understood exactly where I'm going with so this. So what? So thank what you're you. saying? What you're saying in that context is right. That yeah. after some time, yes, the stem borer will uh, outsmart yes uh, this uh, protein that is produced. Yes, Th- this no more. Yes. And even uh, just as you're saying, we have many drugs. Mm. Each time we bring new ones mm. because, for example, um, the sprays. Mm. Insects get used to some sprays. Mm. So what happens that after some time, we will just tack another gene? It's a, it's a continuous process. That once the stem borer uh, how, has discovered what we've done. So, through selection, so essentially, you are assisting nature. We are what we're doing. We're not assisting nature. We are working with nature, so that uh, as we get challenges, we surmount them as time goes. So you are saying that nature is not quite capable of doing this on its own. Well, it can do. Time. It can do, but we can't chance. Mm. We don't because know when it will. We don't want people to keep dying as we wait for nature to solve it. <laughs> Every <laughs> long road mm. as a bend. As as a bend. Us. <laughs> the problem with matters relating to human beings, their livelihood and the safety of it thereof, is always that any information that appears to be adverse is more likely to be consumed much faster than any that is actually positive. And if it precedes, if the nefarious information precedes the more positive one, then instead of just introducing what you may consider to be the correct information, you are fighting what already exists. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, GMO received bad press from the time in the early 70s early and some late 60s when we got yellow maize from the US. We had a drought situation, I know because I ate some of that yellow maize. Quite tasty though. It was only later that we were to be informed that that maize is actually produced for feeding cows. We had a, I had a bit of a problem with that. <laughs> so, But you see, it's, a mispl- it's misplaced because as far as we're concerned, maize flour was meant to be white. So when it is yellow, it opens the door for every conspiracy theory known to mankind. Now, among the things that were said then was that this particular maze with the GMO was intended to sterilize people. Mm. I have two children, so... So that that didn't work, okay. (laughs) (laughs) And now... How, beyond the scientific explanations, does one get to communicate what you know and the rest of us probably don't know about the safety and the benefits of GMO? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> now, the, the first thing is that uh, the GMO, as a general term, uh, there are so many types. And uh, there is one that is meant for America and other countries where we have... Uh, thousands of hectares. That is the Roundup tolerant maize. Because weeding manually is impossible in thousands of hectares. They use a plane to spray through. Mm-hmm. Now, in Kenya, we have, we have small holders. Our biggest problem is mainly, for example, um, the crop pests and other uh, agronomic uh, problems rather than the weed. Mm-hmm. We can weed manually. So, we are, that's why we have, we have BT maize here. And this has been made in Kenya, not uh, in America. Mm-hmm. Now, those theories have developed over time mm. and the, you are very right uh, Mr. Moga, that uh, they, this thing received very bad press and very bad uh, uh, activism mm. earlier on and because this was the first information people had it's very difficult and we are getting it very difficult to turn around the thinking around it we are trying our best but we are getting it very because people already have it and as you said when something concerns human life and safety the bad news travels faster and the bad news become more believable and serious caution is taken. Mm. And I say, even though I'm told if I go through the river, I might be fine. And somebody who doesn't look credible is saying it's very dangerous. Mm. I would rather follow the, cre- the person who is not even credible, but <laughs> I remain safe. Mm. So this is the problem. That somebody can come and say a simple nonsense 
and this nonsense i'm not talking about people who have safety fears i'm talking about deliberate nonsense mm. but because it concerns safety that nonsense flies more mm. now he's uh, given evidence that he has two children i hope only two by choice <laughs> even though he has been taking uh, he took gma's yes, and by the way be, be, happy. <laughs> be, be happy with the numbers i've given you yes. <laughs> contend with those ones <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, so now yellow maize, for example, yellow maize is a variety. Mm. It's a variety, a subspecies, a variety of maize. Um, it's men, mostly called corn, mm. and most of it is GM. Mm. Not all. We have corn in Kenya that is yellow maize, which is not GMO. Mm. It's just a variety of maize. It's not necessarily GMO, and I think it's aware of that that we have yellow maize grown in Kenya. Mm. Uh, not corn. You know, corn is a variety of maize, mm. mostly GMO, but yellow maize itself. It's grown here, but it's ordinary maize. It's, mm. Now, we have a hybrid maize as well. Yep. That was developed to surmount certain challenges, um, especially rainfall and other, other challenges, and even productivity. Mm. Now, what happens is that over time, we bring new hybrids. Yes. Because the older ones succumb to those same problems. And that's what I was asking, talking about earlier, mm. that even for the stem borer, over time, we may have to bring new ones as the challenges emerge as they emerge yes so th that's very true that uh, it's a continuous process mm. even drugs uh, when uh, you you have uh, drug resistance by the same uh, microorganism that you're targeting or the same pathogen you're targeting then you have to develop new drugs yeah this is the way it will go so we are not talking about a one-off mm. solution it's a continuous process it's a continuous process mm. okay. and one thing i would urge kenyans is to trust our system mm. because the truth is this is not a technology that we are dreaming about from today. It has been tested. It has been used elsewhere. It's already been developed. It has already been developed. It has been tested. It has been consumed elsewhere for a long time. Even has, in Kenya. Has it been tested in Kenya? Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, this uh, maize should have gone to the farm two years ago. Had it not been for some other regulatory problems with NEMA and then court case. Mm. Mm. It has been tested across the country. Okay. And... You know, we have two kind of tests in the farm. There is confined field trial, mm. which we did in Makweni at Kiboko. Mm. It's confined. It's shielded out from the public. Yeah. And the product is banned after that. Mm. Because some things are, are going to be proven there. You can't use it. Mm -hmm. it's, a, a, it's not because of safety. It's a regulatory requirement that the product of confined field trial is banned. Mm. And that's what happened. So with through then, that, Okay, sorry, please go ahead. Then you have the national performance trial. Mm -hmm. That happens once it's now approved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You test in different agroecological regions. Does it behave the same? And but that product is consumed. Mm. Farmers have consumed it for two years. You know, I've, I've stopped by Kiboko mm -hmm. and I've bought maize. My India kuchoma apa kubarbar. Sikuona kachama pale kubwa sana mbaya. Yes, akalro apa. Yes, near Hunters Lodge. Yes, and the guys were always selling. We always no have matter maize. the season. Drought, rain. Oh. They yes, always, and that maize is always green and very big. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the area around there oh, is so like dry, <laughs> you'll be shocked. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily GMO. Go you know, they test like so many it. other things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe, in, but that one, if it is from a confined field trial, it was burnt. <laughs> yeah, okay. You can, could not have bought it. Okay. But if it's a product from the National Performance Trial, then you bought it. Then you're likely to have. Yes. The concern, the other concern that, in fact, even the Law Society of Kenya took to okay. court in this particular case. Yes was the issue of indigenous crops mm -hmm. when you introduce now these genetically modified crops yes. um do they phase out what's what's the future mm -hmm. of the indi uh, indigenous crops or indigenous seeds okay thank you now what happens with the hybrid seed mm. you know gmo is more like hybrid seed in the making yeah um talking about in relation to what it does to the land races mm -hmm. land races the indigenous Mm. Although maize is not indigenous to Kenya, but for the purpose of illustration. Okay. Now, what happens that if, for example, there's some crossbreeding or pollen flowing from a GM field, an intentional flow of pollen from a GM field into the land races mm. or the indigenous crops, it will form a hybrid mm -hmm. on that crop. Mm -hmm. Remember, maize is a non overlapping generation kind of crop. You harvest everything and plant new one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you replant your crop, there is something we call hybrid breakdown. My training is in genetics. Mm. So I'm um, safe home. Hybrid breakdown will ensure that that property of uh, insect protection mm. is halved in that generation. Okay. 
then in the next one it's not there anymore mm. and this brings one issue you will have to go back to the agro vet if you need the insect protection so those two will will so half of the genetics of the hybrid of the of the of the insect half protection of the, yes yes half of the hybrid and half of the mm -hmm. indigenous mm -hmm. will come together yes by the time we get to that that generation second generation is gone both are gone yes and that's why even the indigenous is gone the mm -hmm. hybrid is gone even for the for the hybrid seed right if you replant your own crop uh, you'll get very low harvest and and you'll get albino maize mm. you've seen that the, mm. the ones that are whitish mm. at at a very young age they are whitish and then they will dry off yes because of hybrid breakdown so this means there should be no fear of cross pollination it will not affect in the next crop that's the prob that's the fear that that the people have but they they do not ask uh, people who understand these things and that's the problem because uh, the law society of kenya goes to court we have appeared before them and given facts but then you know when people are already made up their mind they wouldn't listen to facts so are you saying essentially mm. i mean yeah. bare facts on the table mm -hmm. that indigenous crops mm. Um, because this is what we're saying essentially that you yeah. will then have a disappearance over time mm -hmm. of indigenous crops you're saying that if you plant in mm -hmm. the next harvest anyway mm -hmm. you start to di diminish your indigenous crops anyway no no no, no. Get is that me what right. I'm saying what I'm saying is this uh. you have your indigenous crop in plot A yes then you have me planting GMAs in plot B right mm -hmm. then pollen has flown mm. a few cases of pollen has flown from, from my crop to yes, your crop to B yeah. to A yes now what I'm saying that the specific tree of maize yeah the particular plant of maize yes which has received pollen from my farm yes will be fine because if you plant it in the next generation mm -hmm. it will become no more land raised maize okay the gene that has flown from my side the mm -hmm. gene that is insect protecting it mm -hmm. will go okay that's what i mean okay so you'll go back to your indigenous, we'll go back so to the indigenous, indigenous, indigenous remains the indigenous, indigenous remains. remains what i'm saying is that the hybrid breakdown Mm. The thing that makes it a hybrid is gone. Okay. Oh, so okay. it's normal maize. So it's for that crop, yes. essentially. Yes. And once you harvest that crop, uh -huh. essentially what you're saying uh -huh. is that if you want to then go to hybrid, you need to reintroduce again. Yes. It's not to going to buy continue. certified seed again. Okay. Yeah. So now where would this information come from? Uh -huh. Essentially that this you've created. And that's the thing. Uh -huh. uh, information. Uh, uh -huh. Because we, if we are left with a vacuum, mm. we're going to fill it with our own information. Oh. <laughs> because we know when we eat GMO mm. foods, we will grow a third nose on the back of your neck, kind of thing. <laughs> a third nose. What do you mean? You uh, grow, yeah. you grow you hands. Hands. By the time you've eaten the first one, you've already grown the second one, <laughs> and then you now is the you, third you one. Grow hair on your forehead. Or such mm. things. Yes. <laughs> People already have that naturally. But okay. Mm. Um, the thing is that yes. without the information is extremely important uh -huh. so then where does this come from where the assumption is okay. that uh -huh. you know um once you introduce this yes. hybrid crop uh -huh. that it is essentially going to become a master crop uh -huh. that then removes everything in its wake but what you're saying now uh -huh. is that for that crop that you have introduced yes. it doesn't move to the next crop Yes. Once you harvest, it's done. And if oh. you want to have that again, this oh. insect protected and etc., you, you must do it again. You go to the agrovet. You go to the agrovet to buy certified maize. I get now, you. Now the other thing is this, mm. because I think this misconception is uh, large. It's it, very. It, yeah. What happens is this? Uh, because what people say is that uh, our land races will be gone and all that. Yes. Remember, we are introducing this gene in a normal maize that has been planted by farmers. Mm -hmm. It's not a new maize. Mm -hmm. This maize is with the farmers. Yes. For example, drought tego. Mm -hmm. We are introducing this gene into that background of drought tego, mm -hmm. which is maize already with the farmers. Okay. So it's a, an added property mm -hmm. to that maize. Okay. There's something I've heard, mm -hmm. and this is, I'm glad you're here because you can demystify this for me. Yes. One of the things that is said about GMO, mm -hmm. and it is said in the context that what you call traditional seeds, mm -hmm. uh, that when you plant it for one season, you cannot keep the seed to be planted for the next. And they argue mm -hmm. that with traditional seeds, all you need to do is just keep some seed aside for the next season and the next and the next and the next. Yes, what happens with this? Yes. You're very right uh, in some context. Because what happens with the hybrid seed, even the normal hybrid seed from Calro, if you replant it, your harvest will go down by 40%. Mm. Hybrid. If you plant hybrid seed from the agrovet, 
and then you harvest that and plant yours, the harvest will go down by more than 40 percent because there is hybrid breakdown. So you'll have to go back to the agrovet. You're aware of that, I, I hope. No, no, actually I'm not. This oh. is what's puzzling me. So hybrid gives me high productivity. Yes. So what do I do? Every time I want to plant, I've got to go back to the agrovet to get the sure. same hybrid. Sure. But if you want the same level of harvest. All right. That one I've got now. Mm. What about the traditional? Is it true then mm. that I could actually replant that one? The traditional yes. is true that you can actually replant that one and continue getting the low harvest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want? High harvest, low harvest? So it's up to you. <laughs> you know, you know, th this is not to say that the traditional ones are bad. The issue is this. The manner in which you harvest and store your seeds. Mm. The manner in which you protect your seeds, hmm. the manner in which you select for seed quality <laughs> is the issue. <laughs> and that because is you, can only, you can actually hire, for example, Calro mm. to do seed bulking for you from your own crop. Because the, the trick lies in how you harvest, how you store, how you prepare seeds. Seed quality. So you're actually saying that this traditional seed mm. can actually be enabled to produce higher yield. Of course, people have, uh, have, have hired scientists to do bulking for them from their own traditional seeds. And it has worked. It works, yes. What's bulking? Uh, bulking means uh, preparing seeds um, in a way that it retains the quality so that there is higher germination, there is higher fecundity and other things that come with seeds. So if we can do this, then what do you need GMO for? You need GMO because your, your normal seed will be affected by the same borer and you'll lose the crop. Because this one is dealing with now <laughs> those harmful yes. sides of the... Yeah. The thing, though, about hybrid and GMO mm -hmm. is you're making a farmer completely dependent mm -hmm. on the seed company. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that? Because well, it means every time you want to plant mm -hmm. a new crop, you must go and buy new seed. For GMO, and as a scientist, I don't lie, for GMO is true, mm -hmm. you have to buy from the agrovet. Unless you want to replant it and you'll get lower harvest, and you'll get lower uh, insect protection, and in the third generation it's gone, it's no more seed now, mm. that's okay. But if you want higher productivity mm. and higher insect protection, then you have to go back to the agrovet. Okay. That, I don't know whether that is called a big dependent seed company, because even today as we talk, farmers are buying seeds from the seed companies without GMO. And as you remember, even the government tried to subsidize fertilizer. Uh, this is not about dependency, this is about uh, jump starting a system that has failed. From a scientist's point of view, you are right. Mm -hmm. But from a business point of view, we see and read dependency. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, 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 yeah. else. You, these people become the promise, dependent on yes, this product the and they have no good. choice but to keep buying it. So you cannot say you don't benefit from it, mm -hmm. but you don't have much of a choice if that's what you want. And the question is, who doesn't want a high yield? Because that's that, the question. Who is. doesn't want a high yield? Sure, but now <laughs> so this those is who want a high yield will come to the agrovet and buy. That's Terry, the question here now, mm. though, really, is that which came first, though? Mm -hmm. Was there a need to commercialize something that would make people eternally dependent on this product? Mm -hmm. Or was there a need to say, you know what? What we want to do is avoid crop failure. Mm -hmm. We want to avoid infestation of crop by, you know, mm -hmm. pests mm -hmm. and insects and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we want to guarantee that, you know, you have a high yield. Which mm -hmm. came first? Because then, or was it a serendipity? There was a, a good mistake that was made. Mm -hmm. When somebody said, if I take this and put it here, I can get a better crop. And then somebody said, wow, I can commercialize it. Mm -hmm. And the only way for you to guarantee this kind of crop mm -hmm. is if you tinker with the makeup mm -hmm. of this uh, seed, because mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is. And then you realize, oh, by golly, I can make money from this thing. Mm -hmm. And I can make these populations dependent on this seed. Without this seed like this, they will not get this high yield of crop. They want to eat. They want to eat. They, they must plant it. And, and uh, would you <laughs> mind uh, going about how, how did the issue of making hybrid seeds come in? No, not GMO. Mm. No more hybrid seeds. Same, same. It's the same it's thing. Not, same yes. thing. And this is done by the government. Calories government. Mm -hmm. Because you have a, a problem you have to solve. So this is my question. Yes. What was being solved? Mm -hmm. The pockets that needed to be filled from a government point of view, mm. creating food for a population that mm. needed to eat. Mm -hmm. 
looking at Carol, for example, because yep. we've been we've been there, we've seen the kind of work that they do. Right. Looking at Carol, Carol sits and says, "You know what? Our yields. Like, can we think of something that's going to guarantee that from January to December, yes. the people of Kenya have food?" Uh -huh. Or was it actually, you know what, let me make these people highly dependent on this thing so that they keep buying from government? And I would go with the former. Yes. So, I would go with the former for government. What came first is that there was a problem. Mm. Remember, scientists don't uh, work in vacuum. Mm. We are there to solve a problem already in society. Mm. And the problem was productivity, low productivity. Mm. And the so growing this, population. This informed it. Mm. Of course, we cannot block somebody else who wants to... Fill their pocket. into the value chain. Yeah. Uh, because I've already made, for example, BT maize. Mm. Uh, no, BT maize is a bad example because it has it will be controlled in a different way. Let's say hybrid seed, for example. Mm. I've already made hybrid seed, and you are an agrovet. You want to tap into the value chain. We can't block you mm. because mm. you're a business person. But Dr. should we then not simplify it and ask, mm. can we actually divorce mm. what one may refer to as a common good? from the pursuit of profit is it possible to can that be controlled yes now for the purpose of uh, bt maize in kenya mm. it will be sold through the same government system kenya seed mm. it's not open to the what you are fearing and calling multinational okay multinationals holds up their own GMO. So multinationals they have sell their, to kenya seed they have their own gmo mm. but we are talking about the one that has been made here so and for your information which is important it has been made through public private partnership PPP. So Kenyan developed BT maize yes. is the only one that will be allowed to be sold in Kenya. I, I wouldn't uh, you talk for the government and say the only one to be allowed. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that purposefully, this one has been developed through a public-private partnership for the use in Kenya. Okay. Whether the government can allow another, I wouldn't really comment. What's or, a what does the regulation say? You just yeah, because I, I wouldn't stop the regulator from doing that. Okay. Yeah. Somebody's asking, what are the side effects of mm -hmm. gmo what are the downsides because you've talked about the positives mm -hmm. what are the negatives of gmo to human well, health to the uh, agriculture system mm -hmm. to the value chain mm -hmm. and even to the industry okay now uh, let me talk about the bt maize mm -hmm. you know it's safe to talk about something you've been involved in sure. from beginning to end mm -hmm. okay the only thing i can talk about in terms of bt maize uh, side effect in or value chain effect mm -hmm. is that for to get productivity you'll have to go back to the agrovet okay okay if you replant yours that gene decays and you get, end up with a normal normal maize which will be prone will to have be, the will borer. be prone to the borer okay so you'll have to go back to the agrovet in terms of safety there is nowhere on earth that anybody has questioned the safety of bt maize the only one that has been discussed extensively mm. is on roundup tolerant maize the one that is uh, Roundup tolerant, mm. which is not in Kenya, mm. it's mainly in the US and other areas where people plant in hectares, mm. thousands of hectares. For BT maize, there is no single person anywhere on earth mm. who has questioned the safety. The environment? Safety to the environment or the person? Or, uh, livestock, humans, and the environment. There's none. Because BT is in the environment already. Okay. The, the virus, the, not the virus, but the bacterium, mm. Bacillus thionogensis, is already in the environment. That's where you got it from. Okay. Yes. So with this, decision of the court yesterday mm -hmm. what does it mean it now means mm. uh, but of course you know legally we have to interpret it mm. it means we are given okay but there's another case to do what to but there's another case in court but currently as it stands if those barring any other case for this particular case it means that we can now the court is saying go ahead grow yes. bt maize yes commercially in case yes but as, as you know very well um if a case is ruled in one court it and there's a similar case another. in another court you mm. have to wait for the other one mm. um it just means that this one is now done mm. uh unless the two are consolidated okay. so so as a stand as we talked to this morning mm. we are waiting for the outcome of the other one mm -hmm. that's what it would mean but this particular one deals with the borer is there research going on to deal with other things yeah of course we have yes, yes yes we have so many other products in the pipeline mm. there's even one that is already at perf national performance trial that is uh cassava mm -hmm. uh, it deals with the cassava mosaic virus mm. and uh cyanide you know the level of cyanide yeah, yeah. Uh, they, that reduces the poison in cassava in cassava so there are many other products that are in the pipeline we have uh, peanut uh, they we have knocked down the three proteins that cause allergy in peanut mm -hmm. the air the which that is within the seed storage proteins that are causing allergy to people who take peanut. 
we have knocked out that so we'll have some gmo peanuts that you don't have to ask for you like very soon very soon and then and then we have uh, <laughs> sweet potato <laughs> you know they suffer from several um fungal mm. uh, and, and viral infections mm. so there are many other things in the pipeline uh, yeah. coming up no interesting discussion when it's coming to an end well, First of all, this, one of, this one of peanuts yeah. yes. mm. <laughs> 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 Dr. Joel Cheng is the program leader at the Agricultural Biotechnologies at the University of Nairobi and the Secretary General of the Kenya University's Biotechnology Consortium. He's been our guest this morning. Thank you very much for educating us. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.